you have to be very consistent. I'm talking three to five videos a day. Yes, it's big picture, but that's what makes the big picture. Who do we want to have on this year? Like what goals do we want? What do we want to do with this? This is something that I truly want to do and I've wanted to for a while, so I'm just going to do it. The power of TikTok is insane. There's so much more visibility and virality potential. What is the trick to TikTok? Give us give us the secrets. You this guys is, are this on is JC's era or her area of expertise. I can't wait to feel eight million years old on this show. <laughs> no, you know what? It's simple. No, it's not simple. <laughs> it is. Okay, okay, that, you're right. There's a lot of layers, but the number one thing is the most cliche thing you've ever heard. You have to be very consistent. And when I say consistent, I'm talking three to five videos a day. Like, I'm not talking one a week. I'm not talking two a week. You need to post every day, like, three times. So it's essentially like an extended Instagram story with more thought into it because that's how much I'm posting on Instagram story, if not more. I would say treat TikTok like your Instagram story and just record. The other thing is, like, just record a lot of stuff and then figure out how to make it into a TikTok later. Like, I don't always have the idea. Sometimes I'll just film things that I'm doing throughout the day and then I'll put it into a TikTok and like put words over it with a trending sound. You know what I mean? So you're doing three to five a day? For the most part, yeah. Sometimes like for the past two days for the new year, I've taken like two days off, but I rarely ever do that. I how much post. time does that take? Like how, like when you think about like your day, how much physical time is that of you actually like creating? It totally depends on the type of content because sometimes I'll just get a spur of the moment idea. I'm like, oh, that's funny. I should make a TikTok on that and it will literally take me 30 seconds. But I have a long list on my notes app of just hundreds of TikTok ideas. So if I ever don't have any ideas, I just go to the list and it can take me, you know, an hour to film some of them. It could take me 10 minutes. It kind of just depends on the specific video. Can we record one with us for after or does that not make sense? No, that makes you sense. guys ready to learn to dance? Yeah. No, 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 no I'm no, kidding. No, 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 no. We we went through our dancing era in 2020, and then and we privated all the videos. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I, I they pop well, up we and they scare me. We can do a dance. <laughs> Listen, Michael Bostic doing a dance. I will go viral. Right. <laughs> Listen, you don't know that's my power. perfect. Yeah. You know what would go viral uh, is those leggings that you wear in the morning that like cup your balls. They're compression I, pants. I can't with those. Like if you were to dance in those, you would go viral. It's those cold. Are it's compression pants. And then you, I don't just go, listen, I see some of these guys, they go out just in the compression pants. I'm like, that is an aggressive move, right? Just yeah. Letting, you know, letting all the beans and the Frank just hang everywhere. You don't want to do that, right? Frank? You know, I'm trying to be nice here. I got some young ladies in the suit. I don't know how to call it. But no, I put the shorts over it so I don't have that. But it's cold out. You can't just go out in shorts Oh, right I now. know it's cold out. I can tell. <laughs> oh, okay, Christ. so let's start from the beginning with you guys. How did you guys meet? And then how did you guys decide to do a podcast together? We met in high school, 15 years old. We met through mutual friends. Yeah. And at a pizza shop. JC doesn't have many I memories have no memory of high school. school so we'll transfer back to her. Yeah. Loved association. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't have many either. <laughs> I, I have so many memories of J, like of JC's in my mind as well. And like not only my memories, but JC's as well from high school. I'm like, remember when your boyfriend did this? She's like, no, I don't remember. Yeah. Um, I don't remember stuff either. I get it. I know. I have I have too good of a memory where I like get stuck in the past. But that's another thing. <laughs> um we met at a pizza shop with like mutual friends and then we decided to, I don't remember why, I think we had the same English teacher or something. We decided to go to like a dance recital of the school that night together. It was extra credit or and something. And you know when you like hang out with someone alone for the first time, it's kind of awkward. Yeah. Like you're like, oh, okay, just me and you like going to do something. Like we like don't. we met through other friends yeah. and we weren't really friends. Okay. But then we were like, oh, we want to go to this uh, this concert for extra credit or something like that. So then we went, yeah. we went together. Yeah. And it was really fun. We made like lots of jokes. And then JC was like, can I sleep over? I was like, sure. And then we literally were best friends from that point on. So at what point do you guys decide to start a podcast? Because you guys look like you are still in high school. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> like you're like, I was hoping Six the chin would ago. make me look older yeah. because people always think I'm 12 years no, old. No, you want to, what do you mean? I want to look like I'm just born. I yeah. told my facialist to give me womb skin. <laughs> Love that. Yeah. No, it's true. It's true. It's a, it's a blessing. Yeah. Um, We are still young. I mean, yeah. 28 this year but we started our podcast almost five years ago and Chelsea had been kind of we had never really spoken about it together but I mean you guys know your OGs also it's like podcasts just weren't super popular mm -hmm. back then so it was kind of a random spur of the moment idea but um I had texted Chelsea 
or we had did we reconnect right before that we yeah. haven't seen each other in a, in a while because we both got married we moved to different states and we were like still keeping in touch we we're both just very busy and then for her birthday i was like would you want to come out to california and hang out with me like for like i'll buy your plane ticket for your birthday and she was like sure and she came and hung out and when we hung out we're like why we can't go more than literally one day without talking like how did we ever not that we disconnected from each other but how did we ever go like weeks without yeah. talking it's so weird and so then that kind of reignited like our friendship and then a month later or something I was like do you want to start a podcast with me we didn't even live in the same state and she was like yes I've been telling Nick her husband she's like that I want to start a podcast like I didn't know, you know, if he'd want to do it with me. So it just kind of like aligned. And then we just started. We also had a blog in high school together and mm-hmm. it was called That's What We Said. We thought that was like so like it's cute. Cheeky. Yeah. Um, where we would write just the most shocking like things about like do's and don'ts. Like um, that was when <laughs> studded vests were like very in like floral combat boots. That was like what? 2012 maybe? Yeah. 2010. And we would write about different cliques at our school and like categorize them. We're literally still trying to figure out how to delete it. Yeah, it's still it's up. So if you want to find it, you should can. bring that back to TikTok, like do episodes of it. I want to see that. Yeah, we should. Yeah. We should react. To we it should. Soon. We Definitely. are so old that in our high school, there was no blogs and they pass around <laughs> a notebook that would somehow circ. I swear to God, you would get this notebook. It would circulate to you somehow. But everybody could some t- get the notebook and pe- random people could just write in the book. Remember that? Thing? Like gossipy? Like sometimes. No, you had a composition notebook that you would write me notes and <laughs> I would occasionally it. throw you a bone and it write was just you one my notebook. He's like, that was I, my diary. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I swear there was a That's notebook. A what was that thing? It was like a notebook got because there's no internet. It was just like the, the notebook got passed around. People wrote in we and had then pagers. someone got okay. in trouble because the guys created a hot list. Oh, oh hot list. not the hot list, yeah. but I was on number one in my hot list in sixth grade yes. and I will take Loves that to my grave. So some people love the hot list, <laughs> yeah. especially if you're on number yep. one on the list. Some I was people like, this like... is so like materialistic. You guys stop. <laughs> 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 you're like enough about me. Yeah. What do you think about me? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you guys start a podcast. It's incredibly successful uh, out of, in my opinion, out of all the shows that are on Dear Media, I think that you guys do such a good job of cultivating community. You're funny. You. You're cute. You're relatable. People love you. You also have done an incredible job with merch. And that's not easy. You know what it's I mean? Not. You guys have definitely been strategic with your merch. You don't just slap a label on it. How did you guys know to do that when you started? Or was this something that happened over time? I think I think you know, it was pretty like immediate. Yes. I was thinking about this exact concept recently. Because I am very much a detail oriented person and like I am not even capable of just doing something halfway or being like, yeah, let's just put what we said on a sweatshirt like that would never even cross our minds. And I was thinking about the concept of this. For me personally, my mom is the detail queen. So we have I own an Airbnb with her and she like runs it and everything. And she makes homemade chocolate chip cookies for every single guest and like they're frozen. Where is this Airbnb? Yeah, it's in Arizona. <laughs> um, and there's frozen cookie dough balls when everyone gets there. It, there's so many personalized details. And I was thinking maybe that's where I've gotten it because she always says like people remember these little details. Like it's all in the details. And so I think that we've collectively had that mindset for our whole podcast with branding, with the Instagram feed, with the merch. It's like it's about the details. It's yes, it's big picture, but that's what makes the big picture is the small moments. Yeah, and I think people sometimes make the mistake of thinking like, what merch will our listeners like the most? Like, what will they want to wear? But we literally every time are like, do what do we want to wear? Like, we would never buy that from somebody else that just said like a stupid little, you know, phrase on it and nothing else. It's like, we want something that's going to be a cute color that's going to have like a cheeky phrase on it that actually means something to us that we would wear out. Like, we don't even necessarily think like, will everybody love this merch? Like, do we like it? Do we think it's cute? Would we actually wear it? Out the and tone about. Yeah, is out so about. important. Yeah. The tone. I, I try to talk to Michael. for I could talk about tones for hours. Mm-hmm. Like even your hair is like the perfect red tone. Like tones are really important, in my opinion, when it comes to branding. Yeah, Absolutely. your production, the Dear Media production team probably knows that about us. We literally yeah. like, they're like, here's the sample. We're like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Can we get a little more pink? Yeah. No, because if the tone, you don't want the tones to bring, like, Michael's, <laughs> you don't want the tones <laughs> to bring out like the yellows in the skin or like you want certain colors to bring out certain things. So I totally get what you guys mm-hmm. are saying about that. Yeah. So after you launched the podcast, did it catch on quick? So we 
had no idea how many listens. We didn't know how to do anything on the back end. So we started no. we're like, we think it's good. We, I, I don't remember how many people we thought listened to it, but it was like, like a thousand or it was something. Like, we thought it was like a thousand or two thousand. And then we, I think it was when we, yeah, was it when we, after we signed to Dear Media, basically yeah. they showed us our back end an- analytics. And I we're came like, in earlier. I said, listen, nobody's listening to this thing. I can maybe <laughs> help you. I'm like, <laughs> I'm just kidding. No. No, <gasps> no, probably. Yeah. No, no, no. We knew, we knew, um, we saw the potential right away for sure. We were going to ask you about that on our yeah. episode. We'll get into that. Right. Yeah. Um, talk about, talk about us. <laughs> right. Yeah. No. Um, but we, when we found out the actual analytics, we were like, what the heck? It was thousands of people basically. And we were like, oh my gosh, we didn't even realize that that many people were listening. And I think it kind of lit a fire under us immediately where we're like, this is kind of catching on quick. It wasn't yeah. astronomical, but we could tell there was potential for sure. So at what point did you guys decide that you were going to kick it up a level and go on tour? Because I've heard through a little birdie at Dear Media when I was doing research on you guys that you guys were selling out tours, which is very, very unique. And did you like going on tour? I have, I'm just going to be honest, I have a ton of hesitancy about going and doing anything live. It just seems like... Be honest, too. A lot of work. Be honest. We... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say we from the beginning. So I was just telling Lauren before we started, like every year when we started the podcast before the first of the year, before the first of January, we would meet up and have like a little brainstorming meeting for what we said, where we would be like, okay, who do we want to have on this year? Like, what goals do we want? What do we want to do with this? Where do we see this going? And I feel like live tours were like live shows were always on our list. We grew up, we did dance class together. So we always were like performing. I think we both love attention, being on stage. And then we also riff really well off of each other. So we also sang together. We like won our high school talent show and stuff. So we always were like performing together. And our dance class, people would literally tell us all the time. We were so annoying. Like we were the ones (laughs) like talking when making jokes, like while we were all trying to learn choreography or something like that. And people would always tell us in the class, like, you guys should start a talk show or something together. And we were like, no, that is well, like us. No, we're so annoying. Yeah. But it's people love annoying. So out of reach. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But mm-hmm. this felt more. The tour thing, I think for our personalities, we kind of thrive. Like we weirdly, every time we get off stage, I'm like, we were meant to do this. Like mm-hmm. it's it's very, it's this feeling of like, we're just good, I think, at performing or something. I don't know what it is. And we just work very well with each other. Like we can bounce off each other super well. So personally, it was kind of like a dream come true to be able to do that. We were felt like we're living out these like pop star dreams, but we just get to talk and just like yeah. tell inside jokes. Because when you sing, like I used to do music where I would like sing and perform and I would like play a song and then I would talk to the audience in between the songs and then I would play another song. And I was saying, that's a that was my favorite part of the show. The most scary part of performing live was singing and making sure you didn't like mess up or the talking was so easy because you were just like the energy of the crowd. You could just kind of... I don't know, make something up and get people laughing. And off them. That's You're just saying what we if get we to go, do. I should get on there and start singing first or? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Start with yeah. the song. It. Dance in it. your compression type. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that caused double the wind. in between of touring though. Like, I'm yeah. not talking about being on stage. I'm talking about the nitty gritty behind the scenes that no one sees. What is that like? It definitely, there were some moments that were like. There's got to be some moments. There yeah. were some moments, yeah, for sure. Where, where you're losing your shit. Yeah, and we're just like drained or just like the travel. I think if we were, we're doing more shows and like more tours this this year and we're trying to be strategic so that we don't burn out. Like we we realized when we yeah. did three cities even in a row or it was, well, three shows in a row, two yeah. cities. We were like, wow. At the end, we're like, whoa. Like, got to recharge. Was, yeah, that was yeah. quite, yeah, quite a lot. JC, you talk about on your TikTok eras, and mm-hmm. there was this one era that you talked about specifically. I think, I think it was like sad girl something. There, there was a name for it. It was flop era, potentially. flop era, flop era, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> and sad girl era. But no, but All you you spoke about flop era. I feel like sad girl era goes on forever. It like just goes on and on. No, am I gonna get? Am I, it happens get like once a month. Probably. I'm like, don't fucking talk to me in the morning because you're annoying. Era. Yeah. <laughs> Is that an era? I love I everything. Era. <laughs> yeah. Um. So you talk about flop era on your on your TikTok, and in this video, you said that you decided that you were going to get your chin done, mm-hmm. and you were sick of worried worrying about what everyone else thought. Can you talk us through? why you were worried about what everyone thought before you got your chin done. But, I want to know what but that was what like. what is a flop era? Okay, oh. first let's define the flop era. Okay. Flop it's era... when your dick is floppy. <laughs> That's it. 
I've very been similar. That, that era has been going on too for a while. <laughs> it's used by Agra era. <laughs> Well, that has not happened yet. <laughs> not, <laughs> Maybe, yet. Not, not yet. Not that area yet. <laughs> no, but, you know, with these kids popping out left and right, might honestly yeah. pray for the We'll stay tuned. We'll stay yeah, tuned for yeah, you guys. We'll I'll, I'll keep you guys updated. Yeah, I'm sure you will. The flop is like, okay, you know they say, like, you have to experience the rain before you can experience the sunshine, right? So as, as the kids like to say these days, you have to experience the flop before you experience the sleigh. And what that means is you have to experience a low before you experience a high. And I feel like there was a like a period years. I'm talking years of my life where I was in my quote unquote flop era, which means I wasn't super happy. I wasn't super confident. I didn't feel like anything I was putting out into the world was like what I truly wanted and blah, blah, blah. You felt down. I felt down. Okay. Yeah. And there was kind of this moment. It was the end of 2021, like fall time. And I was like, I think I'm done with the flopping. Like I got to get I got to get my stuff together. I just want to feel like confident and happy. And um, I had been thinking about getting my chin done, getting a chin implant and getting the buckle fat removal, all this stuff. And I had just been so hesitant because I'm like, I just don't want, I just don't want to hear it just from people being annoying. And I people actually- People being annoying in the sense of like upset that you change your face or do or do a procedure. Yeah, family or people saying you shouldn't get that done or, or people on the internet saying I'm getting plastic surgery or whatever. And I, I was like, this is kind of like a, it sounds silly, but- an act I'm taking for myself, doing something for myself to prove I don't care. Like what anyone thinks, this is something that I truly want to do and I've wanted to for a while, so I'm just gonna do it. So I got my chin done in January. It's been like a year. Taylor, can you turn that fan off? It's driving me nuts over there. Anyways, (laughs) you can leave that part in too. I just, I don't know why you got that fan going in here. Yeah, but it's a little weird. Remember we talked about this? We talked about prepping the studios. Uh, 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 Yeah. Yeah. So it's always Diamond. a fan. It's, it's always uh, maybe when we get to episode something. 570, you will get the studios <laughs> prepped to the way I it prefer them. Here are, uh, Taylor, are you in your flop era? <laughs> yeah. Taylor, flop Taylor, Taylor has been in the flop era for a while. Don't actually flop down on the floor here, please. Okay. Oh my gosh. Not okay, to distract so everyone. When you got your chin done, I'm gonna go ahead and guess because you owned it and you decided to take it into your own hands and do what you wanted, that you didn't get a lot of hate. Thank God for dry shampoo. I am not someone who likes to wash my hair every single day, so I live and die by dry shampoo. So here's the one that you need to try. This is the one that I've been using in between workouts. I've been using it when I just don't feel like washing my hair, and it is by Living Proof. You've seen Living Proof everywhere. They have two dry shampoos. The one that I like is Living Proof's Perfect Hair Day. It's like this clean, dry shampoo, and I just feel like it makes my hair look so soft and silky and freshly washed. I actually use it at night. I'll spray a little bit of Living Proof's Hair Day shampoo in my hair. And then I'll wrap it in a sleep bun, which I'm going to show you on TikTok soon. And I'm telling you, I wake up in the morning with the softest, silkiest hair, and it feels like I freshly washed it. And this is all thanks to Living Proof's Perfect Hair Day. And the reason that I like their products is there's no silicones, there's no harsh sulfates, there's no SLS, there's no SLES, there's no parabens, and they're also PETA certified, cruelty-free. They're color safe and they're really safe for chemically treated hair. So they really like check all the boxes for me. You should also know that they understand it's not a one size fits all solution. So sometimes people have frizzy hair, lack of volume, lack of curl. They really have perfected the art of finding what works for you. They have like an online hair quiz. that's really easy. So stop concealing your hair on those wash days and show off your hair's natural brilliance with living proof. Visit livingproof.com slash skinny and use code skinny. You get a free travel size dry shampoo so you can try it with your purchase of $45 or more. That's livingproof.com slash skinny code skinny. You get a free travel size dry shampoo with your purchase of $45 or more. Livingproof.com slash skinny code skinny. The best ready to eat meals are Saqqara. Like I have to tell you, if you're looking at to live your best life and nourish yourself and you want to do it easy and streamlined and deliver it straight to your door, you have to check out Saqqara. I am a fan of their organic meals, but I'm also obsessed with their wellness essentials. Every single morning, I use their detox drops. They're like these chlorophyll drops that you put in your water, and they really help with blood circulation. They're also incredible if you're in high altitude. And then I also use their beauty drops in my water. And this is just like a quick, easy, efficient way to get more minerals in throughout the day. 
I wake up, I do tons of ice in a big tumbler. Maybe I'll slice some ginger, add some lemon, do water. And then I do my detox drops. So it turns the water green and then a couple of the beauty drops. And they have this set in their wellness area on their site. You have to try this if you haven't. I leave it in like my little wellness cabinet. So it's quick. It's a tincture and they're perfect. I'm obsessed. So go on their site, check out their wellness essentials. So as you can see, Sakara delivers science back plant-rich nutrition programs and wellness essentials right to your door. Their ready-to-eat meals are nutritionally designed to deliver results from weight management to easing bloating to even boosting your energy and clearer skin. And right now, Sakara is offering all our listeners 20% off your first order. You're going to go to sakara.com slash skinny or use code skinny at checkout. That's sakara, S-A-K-A-R-A dot com slash skinny. You get 20% off your first order. I'm telling you, get those detox drops. They're so good. Sakara.com slash skinny. All right. I really have no excuse because I have something called Aloe Moves. It's a streaming on-demand wellness platform. It features yoga, fitness, meditation, everything basically from one of all of our favorite brands, Aloe Yoga. So if you're a busy mom or you don't have time to go to the gym, you can just log in and go to Aloe Moves. It is absolutely amazing when it comes to content. The content is always fresh. Like you guys, they have over 100 new classes added every month. So every time I log in, it's fresh. It's new. They have like 3000 classes for every level, beginner to advanced. I can click quickly and I can even pick how long I want to go. Their quality, they're like studio style. I don't have to get in my car. I don't have to bring my mat and lug all my shit and get to the gym. I just can do it right from my home. You could do yoga. You could do bar. I really like the Pilates. I love Pilates from home cardio and HIIT classes. They also have relaxing guided meditations. Sometimes I'll do a Pilates class and then I'll end it with a sound bath and they have like breath work. I'm telling you, it's insane. Everyone needs to try it. It's not just me that is loving Aloe Moves. It was actually voted best wellness app of 2022 by InStyle Magazine and the best yoga app of 2023 by Women's Health. For a limited time, Allo Moves is offering our listeners a free 30-day trial, plus you get 50% off an annual membership. But you can only get this by going to allomoves.com and using code SKINNY in all caps. That's A-L-O moves.com and all caps code SKINNY to get a free 30-day trial plus 50% off an annual membership. Allomoves.com code SKINNY, all caps. Yeah, I actually didn't. And and Chelsea coined the term chinfluencer very early on. And that became my bio on TikTok. And I just started sharing my whole journey. It was funny because going into it, I wasn't sure if I was actually going to share anything. Um, I thought about working with the doctor and ma- asking him, do you work with influencers and maybe trying to get a deal? And I was just like, I don't know if I even want to share this. Like maybe once I get it done, I'll want to. Who knows? Um, and then, yeah, I'm incapable of being mysterious. So I am. We, we knew it was going to happen. <laughs> yeah. I was going to share it. But yeah, I just ended up sharing the journey. And it like... On TikTok, the videos did great. Sure, some people here and there there would say stuff, but um, for the most part, like not much backlash at all. People just like interested the person in that it. said something wanted to get their chin done. Yeah, mm-hmm. some people they'll they'll try and lie and be like, yeah. "You looked better before. Like you look so ugly now." And yeah. I'm like, "Don't just don't lie." Yeah, you know what I mean. Don't gaslight it's me. Like, don't gaslight me into that. Mm-hmm. I feel we like both the, know the truth. The people that say the mean things on the internet are in their flop era. They're, they're, they're flopping hard, right? Yeah, I think yeah. that's Absolutely. the right name. I'm gonna use it to everyone. I'm gonna start telling all the people, like the, the old bats in my life, like, "Listen, man, you're you're really in a <laughs> you're flop. You're flopping. You're Listen, flop. you're flopping. I'm slaying. Yeah. That's all you need. And to then know. I'm not gonna tell them what it even means. Just be like, God, you're really you're really flopping. Chelsea, were you? Were you excited when you found out you were pregnant with all that you have going on? When you did have the baby, has it been a lot to balance? You guys have got a lot going on. And I know yeah. creating content, podcasts, it can be a lot with a kid. Yeah, it was weird. It was like it, me and JC, hopefully this year we're on our sleigh era together. Like we have been trading. It's like the flo- like this sleigh <laughs> goes from one to the other. I feel like as soon as I had Case when he was... Like after the newborn bliss, because I feel like I was just in la la land for the first three months. But then once I had to start going back to work and like all the expectations came back of like, oh, I don't look like how I looked before. Oh, I have to do the exact same things I was doing. But now I have to add this other person into my life and literally feed him, bathe him, make sure I'm doing all these things for him and also protecting him. And now I share so much of my life. How much do I want to share of him? Now I'm feeling like so conflicted. I feel like I was way too in my head. And then you add in the hormones and all of that. 
crap. I just feel like it was, I was just talking about how I had to have um, like a year of really like growing pains of trying to figure out how do I share about my life without sharing so much of him, even though he's such a big part of my life. How do I, you know, uh, stay part, like true to who I am? How do I keep my own identity? But also now he's so much of my identity. Like it's so, I don't know, confusing. But I think after the hormones have worn off and I think after just a year of being used to the schedule and just the new life that I'm living, I feel like it's been, I'm happier than ever. And I feel like it's the balance that I've always wanted. And I feel like my life is so full, whereas before it was feeling very overwhelming. You know what's so weird? The one thing that helped me balance my hormones so much after having a baby, this is like really weird, is getting in a cold plunge. It does, it balances really? your hormones right away. Okay, like you literally a- get in for two minutes and you get out and you can feel, I know this is crazy, you can feel your parasympathetic, like just it evens out. I can't even explain it. I believe it. I took a cold shower this morning and it felt literally amazing. Okay, but I was like, I should have done this freezing? a year ago. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's all the way to this. Good. Make it as cold as And it was like, took my breath away. It is it is no joke after you have a baby. Yeah. Like, it is no joke. And then meanwhile, they're over here like, what's wrong <laughs> yeah. with you? Yeah. What the fuck do yeah. you mean? What's wrong with me? It's like, what's not wrong with me? What is wrong with you to ask me that question? It's so layered, too. Like, oh, I, I was trying to tell. I hate when guys do that. <laughs> Throw it in the gutter. Yeah, those guys are terrible. That I do know. That. It's just hard because they will never understand. Like, the man will never understand what you go through. And that's not a mark on them. That's It's just impossible for uh, them to understand. Little, I'm like, mm. <laughs> It's a B minus. But <laughs> Lauren, I'm not kidding. Lauren actually gets angry with me actually, that I can't have a baby. Yeah. Well, and I'm just I, disgusted uh, you know that you <laughs> when you look at when you look at them with their shirt actually, off, you I'm are mad disgusted. at their nipples I'm being disgusted. used. Someone, someone that you can't have a baby. Someone's like gonna it. pull that out of context and say Michael Vosick saying men can't have a baby, which honestly they we can't I actually and think they're gonna it's be yeah. mad. Despicable. Like it's yeah, annoying. She's, no, but she actually gets like violently angry with me. And I'm like, I didn't make the rules. I have nothing to yeah. do with why this happens this way. It's, right? it's, I was just seeing all these TikToks come up on my For You page about how it's resentment too, but it's like resentment comes from jealousy, not anger, where it's like, we're just jealous that you get to have so much of your normal life and you're not, you're not giving so much of your physical being to they parenthood. Do nothing. You get the fun <laughs> part of parenthood. What do you mean I do nothing? <laughs> You what during my pregnancy, and I'm, I don't know if you had the same experience, mm-hmm. Chelsea. You do nothing. You sit with a piece of hay in your tooth, and you say, "You literally, you, I, I, I could." The whole time, I was just like annoyed. Well, there's nothing really to do, to be honest. <laughs> like, what am I supposed to? I mean, I give you a pat on the back, or maybe a slap <laughs> on the ass, and say, "Keep g- good job," you know, like get you what you need. I just find I, it yeah, that's great. I think that's a great place to start. Like yeah, a juice annoying. or something, get a Postmate. I can't cook for shit, yeah. so like, you know. Yeah, it's annoying. But there's nothing. I there's, I mean, I think you're just jealous of me, Lauren. Mm. That's like she's what she said. That's what we've learned. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah I <can>. unfortunately. <laughs> You have opened up, JC, about your struggles with infertility. Mm-hmm. Why did you decide to open up about that? What has that journey been like? It, I, you said something on TikTok, too. You said you kind of were not going to be so fixated on it anymore. Yeah. Are you still at that place? It's so weird because I think I have two different worlds that I'm a part of or that, you know, it's like the world I grew up in and, and an environment I'm around a lot and then kind of like my... I don't know, the world I'm in now, my adulthood. I'm surrounded by two separate groups of people. And where I grew mean? up was... Yeah, explain, explain. Where we both grew up, you get married when you're super young. You have kids immediately. Remind like, me where you guys grew up? Gilbert, Arizona. Arizona. Where, where? Gilbert? Gilbert, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, And it's just so normal. And so I think it's weird because I've always been toying with these two sides of also my personality where I was like, I'm not going to get married young. Like I've always been so entrepreneurial and and career oriented. I was like, I like, I don't need no man. I, whatever, got married when I was 21. So I kind of followed that same trajectory, but I was like, well, I don't want to have kids like right away. So after we had been married for like three years, I was like, okay, I'm ready to like start trying to have kids. And that was like four years ago at this point. Um, I was like, because I, I would like to have kids when I'm like 25. And it's funny because I think that probably sounds really young to like people. Even when I moved to L.A., people are like, oh, my gosh, you're already married. You're already trying for kids. Like they're shocked. And then 
from my hometown, people are like, wait, why don't they have kids? Like, it's like this huge thing. Like, where, you know what I'm saying? So um, I felt this weird pressure, like we need to get going. And then it wasn't working. I'm like, oh, what the heck? And so basically, yeah, we tried for like a year or something. And then we just went to a doctor to make sure everything was okay. And we got some irregular results. My husband had uh, childhood leukemia. And so they think that could be part of the picture. Anyway, so that's kind of the story. We did some fertility treatments. They didn't work. And so I I was very fixated on it, though. And I felt like I was like, this is the one thing that's like not working. And I wasn't focusing on all the amazing things in my life that were going so well. And also realizing like I'm young. I, I'm in this era of my life that like I'm going to look back on one day and be really upset with myself that I've just spent all my time like comparing my timeline to other people and being you know, mad about not getting pregnant when there's so many awesome things happening. And so that's kind of that moment that I was talking about also where I was like, I'm going to get my chin chin done. I'm getting like everything that I can't do while I'm pregnant. Like I'm just going to live this year, like on my own terms, which was 2022. And it was such a great year. And it was just, it was crazy because literally all that changed was my mentality and my mindset of not fixating on it. And like kind of just trying to have an abundance mindset, I guess, and focus on all the good things and all the things that are going right is IVF even on the table? Is it something you ever want to explore? Yeah. So IVF we'll probably do this year, potentially. That's that's kind of my vision for the year at some point. But yeah, we did three IUIs. I don't know if you're familiar with yeah, IUI. We just had a fertility expert on and there's a lot of people I think that are listening that are curious about this. And I don't think there's a lot of people that speak out about it. Olivia Copel just came out and said she froze her eggs. I think that's incredible. Like when you say IUI, does that mean this is an ignorant question. Does that mean that you've already frozen embryos? What does that mean? No. So IUI is less invasive and it's basically where they just take, I could be wrong on the little details, but this is essentially the idea. Don't worry. Everyone will tell you if you're wrong. Yeah, on the little yeah. details. I'm sure, I'm sure I'll get some comments. <laughs> yeah. um, Cause it was over a year. It was like a year and a half ago that we did these, but we did three separate rounds of it, but it's basically where they take your partner's sperm and they just put it up and like they get it to the right. You. Yeah. They inseminate you and they, they get it to like the right area for a better chance of conception um, but with IVF, you're actually, I mean, if you guys just had an expert on, you know, but you're yeah, the, actually the egg retrieval and then inseminating. Yes, the egg. They're creating so, an embryo. Yeah. Okay. So you, you have it, what the IUI is not the part where you are removing the eggs or they're just trying to get the sperm into the correct, correct area yep. to, yeah. to have a better chance. Of and conceiving. they watch like your follicles and stuff like that as well yeah. to yeah. make sure it's like optimum ovulation. The reason stuff. they do this is just less invasive. It's not, yeah, it's, it's, kind of, it's process. less expensive. It's less invasive. It's kind of like the first step of treatment I had I've had multiple friends who've gotten pregnant from it so I was kind of hopeful but what I learned after doing three of them they were like with your specific issue or like the thing that we would need to correct IVF would be the thing like it could work it gives you a better chance doing IUI but IVF would be a little bit more it's not talked about enough how hard this process is on a woman too there's hormones there's dealing with doctors there's scheduling appointments there's doing all these things that it's it's a lot and pressure it's a mm-hmm. lot of pressure it's a lot of pressure i mean i think that you opening up about this is really incredible for a lot of people because i think a lot of people are going through this thank you yeah i mean i get so many messages of people saying i'm going through the exact same thing so that makes me feel good about sharing it but yeah it's an interesting it's a unique road to walk for sure we just had a woman on our podcast who went through seven cycles of IVF? Of IVF. Wow. Seven. She's on the show Bling Empire. Mm. Um, Christine. Oh, seven I love Bling Empire. Seven cycles. And sh- it took seven cycles for her, and she was doing the hormones seven times. One time her eggs were lost. Uh, by the clinic? By the Absolutely clinic. Absolutely not. So this this is, like, why we had the expert on, because you ha- you cannot, like, call up and Google, like, what's the cheapest clinic in yeah. my area? Like, you need to, like go to someone that is reputable like it's very important that i mean they're dealing with embryos so i think that the more that this is talked about people will have more knowledge and knowledge is power and it's good definitely i agree completely um so with where you guys are at right now you're crushing it on tiktok you're crushing it on the podcast do you guys have any tips tricks for someone who wants to get started on tiktok or in podcasting today Oh, so many. I Where know. to begin? Let me get my notepad for well, TikTok. Well, first of all, I think this is something that we're going to hopefully work on this year, which we haven't yet. So I can't speak from experience. But I think that clip, 
clips on TikTok, like video clips of you podcasting. Very important. Very, very important. I've seen so many, t- so many podcasts blow up because of just TikTok. The power of TikTok is insane. There's so much more visibility and virality potential, which can just, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Convert, basically. Lots of people to go listen to an episode and then maybe they'll get hooked. So I think that that is a huge thing that people should be taking advantage of. We literally uh, we don't, don't even do that. We but. don't do it. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, that's funny. Like, Dear Media's strongest social channel is by far probably the TikTok. And we've had a lot of shows kind of blow up because of the videos that get posted on TikTok. And when we started it, we had no presence. And it was also maybe a little bit more challenging because it wasn't like an individual, you know, so there's no connection. It's just like a, a media company. But yeah, the TikTok videos, like we've seen on the analytics mm-hmm. side, shows that maybe didn't have as many listens blow up on TikTok and then like the show skyrockets. I believe it 100%. I think uh, my other thing is that our mentality with what we said has always been kind of like we're creating our own little world. That's the way I like to think of it. And even our branding on our Instagram and merch and all of the stuff, it's all encompassing. but I think it's always been important for us to create a visual aspect to like a, a previously only audio experience, basically. So we like that people can listen to our voices, but then they can go to our Instagram and be a part of our world almost. It's just like this fun. Makes it more blue. tangible a little yeah. bit. And it feels like you're part of just this little community in this world. And I feel like that's a good tip for anyone starting a podcast like Create your own little space on the internet. It can literally be whatever you want it to be. You can do photo shoots for it. You can do cool video clips. Like, just make it your own. You know? Yeah. Do you have any tips? No, I think that's perfect. And I think, again, kind of what I was saying about the merch is thinking about what you like, what right. you mm-hmm. want to listen to, like what you want to listen to and what you want to talk about. Because a lot of, uh, I think the first year we did our podcast, we kind of started doing like, what do we think people want to listen to? Like, oh, they want to listen about this topic or they want to listen about this topic. But as soon as we started doing things we like to talk about, like even as silly as like embarrassing stories, those episodes would do so much better. And all of a sudden the podcast became more fun to do because we were actually actually talking about things we liked and people liked it more because people are actually more similar to you than you think. You're not trying to like relate to these strangers that, I don't know, mm-hmm. are completely different. You guys have done a good job of building community. What's your toxic traits? Ooh, our talks are many like about the podcast or just in general. It could be anything. Get creative. And then we'll go over Michael's. Start, <laughs> start thinking of your uh, also get my uh, your scroll. Chelsea's toxic trait is the way she wakes me up. Oh, in the we're doing this for each sure. other. I thought you were saying we're Ooh. trying to be self-aware. Oh, oh, I don't love that one. <laughs> we're doing our own. No, ch- <laughs> Chelsea's toxic trait is the way she wakes you up in the morning. How does she wake you up? I'm just very wow. cheery in the morning. Oh, <laughs> my toxic She's trait is like... believing that everyone else is toxic besides myself. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, sorry, I didn't realize it was my in the own. morning. Um, mm-hmm. she is so happy in the morning and I'm like, I yeah. can't like, I'm the opposite. Mm-hmm. I will. But you know what? I'm your worst nightmare because I will like start talking business 11 PM. Like we're on tour and I'm like, okay, so I have this idea for this. And she's like, okay. And like, I can, tell I get so tired. Not. Like we're opposite. You're I'm the morning. So, you're the yes. evening. Okay. Yep. Definitely. And awesome I get either. grumpy after like, <laughs> yeah. <eight. laughs> yeah. I'm don't talk to me yeah. between the Lauren, hours. Lauren is terrible in the morning and, and at the night. So <laughs> no, I'm just like, like he starts talking to me in the morning about, I swear on my life today. He says to me, where do you think you want to go to new year's next year? I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? I literally, I'm like, uh, let me like, no, that's me through, actually. T- let me get through today. Man. I want to check off the list. I I'm don't... like, what in the oh, hell no. are you talking about? <laughs> he, then he asked me, he gave me a straight face <laughs> on Christmas when I'm wrapping the gifts and the, this and the, that he's like, where where would you think you want to go for your birthday? It's sweet. It's endearing. You know I can't what? Fuck it. You're not going yeah. anywhere for your birthday. your birthday. We're staying at home. In May. <laughs> you know what? You're staying at home. You're not going anywhere. K- trips canceled. Taylor, cancel all the trips. Oh, my I gosh. I mean, he's like talking about my Ira at like, I can't, can't do it, man. You know what, Lauren? No, I just, I got to wake up. Like, I got to have some coffee, like perhaps some lemon water, ice roll. Like, I just need a minute. One like, day slow. when I'm dead in the ground, you're going to be looking back saying, I wish somebody oh, was still God, here no, to plan my trip quiet. a year from now. All right. <laughs> That's true. Well, so for, I'll, I'll tell my own toxic trait is I'm unfortunately, I'm chronically online. Do you guys know that phrase? Is that like just like you're scrolling that? Well, no, it's because you're not chronically online and that's why you don't know it. And that's a good thing. Being <laughs> chronically online is like your brain is literally a TikTok audio. Like you just think in, you think in TikTok you comments think in, talk, in TikTok like world. I'm so immersed in like TikTok culture that I do know a lot about it. But also sometimes I'm like, 
I can just see like anything we're doing right now. I'm like, oh, that could be a TikTok. Like, oh, we could talk about that. It like, just like an it's example. my brain. Like Taylor turning off the fan. Is that a TikTok? We could definitely make a TikTok out of it, 100%. Like, I, I just feel like anything, and that's that's my problem, is just that I have a hard time being in the present moment because I've been, so I've never had a normal job. I've only ever, since I was 16 years old, I started, I was a photographer. That's been my, like, I was a photographer, and then I was a influencer. I've never had another job, and so I've always just been in this mode of, like, I got to, like, what's next? Okay, I, I don't know how to explain it. So, um, yeah, that's my toxic trait is I'm always just, like, going 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 and I'm always thinking about like oh I need to do that for content oh that would be funny like I don't it's it's an issue I need to be present more often why Chelsea tells me her toxic trait and yours Taylor start (laughs) thinking about yours and make sure your mic's on because I actually want to hear what yours is um my toxic trait if we're being oh (laughs) gee Taylor go out there and fire somebody (laughs) um my toxic trait uh let me dig deep 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 down try and think of a good one I think that something I'm actually working on this year that's actually actually is a little bit toxic is and not like in a fun, lighthearted way (laughs) is that I don't like being told something that I already know or that like maybe I don't even know, but I think that I should know. You would hate it's like my ego. (laughs) It's like my ego. It's like if they're like, oh, you mean example. So the classic example is like when you're younger and your mom's like. You're about to do the dishes. I'm like, I'm going to do the dishes for my mom. And she's like, oh, I would love if you did the dishes for me. And I'm like, well, I don't want to do the dishes anymore because I was already thinking of that. Like, that's that was my idea. But now that you said that, I don't get the credit for it. Or if someone's like, you really should read self-help books at night before you go to bed. And I'm like, I know. Like, I already knew that. So then you won't do it. Maybe. Like, (laughs) then I'm just like, I just don't want them to think that I'm that I don't know things. And I've realized it's deep rooted. It's deep rooted. And th- like people it. thinking that I, I grew up with older brothers and I okay. think I and all of their friends. And I think I always wanted to like act like I was as old and as like knowledgeable and just as like cool as them. So, so you're a little bit of a rebellious streak. What? It's a little of a, like a rebellious yeah, streak. It's like yeah. you were going to do it. But then if you're told to do it, you don't you're no longer want to exactly. do it because someone told you. Exactly. Or if someone like just says like. It's very hard for me when I used to work in other jobs where I had a boss and I would already be doing something like I would already be, you know, I worked at anthropology, like going to fold a thing of clothes and they'd be like, you need to go fold those clothes. And I'm like, well, I already knew that. Like, I trust me. I know that I was going to go do that. Just like so, You don't need to tell me. To do. Yeah. All right. One thing that we did when we moved to Austin was we really concentrated on trying to make our house as non-toxic as possible. And one of the things that we switched out was our cookware. I learned about cookware on the podcast with Max, I think. He came on, he's this health guru, and he talked all about how we're cooking all of these healthy foods in toxic cookware. So I went and looked for kitchenware and I found a way to ditch the chemicals. Okay, so Careway. What I did is I got the cookware set. So it comes in a set of four pans and I got the classic one in cream. It's so beautiful. I cannot even tell you. It's the kind of kitchenware that you want to leave out and you don't want to put in the drawer, which is amazing. It has a ceramic coat on it. And I have to tell you, Michael makes eggs every single morning for Zaza on this, and it never sticks, which we love. They also have other products. They have like food storage and a tea kettle, and then obviously the mini cookware. But I'm telling you, the one to look at is their cookware set. That's what we have. I love it. So now you can go chemical-free with their chemical-free ceramic coating. So you can prepare your food with peace of mind. There's no hard-to-pronounce compounds that will leach into your healthy ingredients in these. And of course, we have a code. If you want some non-toxic, easy cooking, well-loved cookware, you're going to visit carawayhome.com slash skinny to take advantage of this limited time offer for 10% off your first purchase. This deal is exclusive for our listeners. So visit carawayhome.com slash skinny or use code skinny at checkout. Caraway, non-toxic cookware made modern. You know what I love more than anything? A company that is not afraid to push the boundaries, that's constantly innovating, that's mission-driven, that just creates really kick-ass, great products and supplements. And that's why I love Symbiotica so much, and so does Lauren. We love this company so much. Our pantry is stacked. We have the protein powder. We have the supplements. We have the liposomal supplements. We have the vitamins. We have pretty much everything from them. We have our hydration packs. The founder, Shervin, has become a close friend. He's been on this show multiple 
multiple times and is getting ready to come back. We have something wild that we're about to talk about with all of you guys, a new topic that we haven't discussed on this show. So where do we even begin with Symbiotica? I mean, at this point, we've talked about them for so long and they have such an amazing offering. I, for one, if I was starting from ground zero, have never tried any of the products, I would definitely jump into their vitamin D3 and CoQ10 with K2 formula. I take it every single day. Zaza takes a little bit of it. Lauren takes it every single day. You're going to want that for immune function. I love their methylated B12 and Beast complex with folate. That again is a daily. Their zinc is an incredible formulation. If you're into protein powders, they have one of the most complete plant-based protein powders. It's absolutely incredible. And do not sleep on their magnesium. Magnesium threonite and their magnesium spray. That magnesium threonite is good any time in the day. But if you take that stuff before bed, you're going to have the most incredible sleep of your night. So many of us have shown that we are magnesium deficient. And magnesium is an essential mineral that is required for 80% of the body's metabolic function. So definitely important. They also also have an incredible super greens that you could just squirt into your water or whatever beverage you're having. You can take their online quiz to figure out the best supplements for your specific health goals if this is overwhelming to you. And of course, we have an offer. Visit symbiotica.com slash skinny for 15% off site wide. That's C-Y-M-B-I-O-T-I-K-A.com slash skinny for 15% off site wide. Enjoy. If you are a regular listener of this show, I am sure you are very much aware of good probiotics and prebiotics, but have you heard of a postbiotic? If not, I have a game changer for you. What is a postbiotic exactly? They are active nutrients your body makes during digestion and are an emerging driver of good health. This year, Lauren and I have been all about kicking it up a notch when it comes to our overall health. Lauren delivered our second child, as many of you know. I'm trying to keep up with all of that, and health and fitness have just become our main priorities. We cut alcohol. We're in the gym all the time, eating right, and of course, taking the best products that we can find. One of our favorite new products is from Timeline Nutrition, and it's called MitoPure. MitoPure uses urolithin A, which is one of the first probiotics shown to have major health benefits. What urolithin A does is upgrade your body's cellular power. This is going to give you energy to optimize. It's going to help you maintain muscle, which is critically important, obviously, for longevity and overall health, as well as weight management. Studies have shown that even 500 milligrams of urolithin A significantly increases muscle strength and endurance with no other change in lifestyle. It's incredible for anyone who wants to kick it up a notch, feel better, and just perform better overall. Mitopier comes in three forms, which I love, berry powder, protein powder, and soft gels. I personally like the soft gels because I can take them with the rest of my supplements very easily. So check this stuff out. It's a complete game changer. And of course, right now, Timeline Nutrition is offering 10% off your first order of Mitopier. Go to timelinenutrition.com slash skinny and use code skinny to get 10% off your order. That's T I M E L I N E N U T R I T I O N dot com slash skinny. I recommend trying their starter pack with all three formats. Enjoy timeline nutrition dot com slash skinny. Oh, you would, listen, yeah. we can relate. I do not like being told what to do at all. <laughs> uh, what's JC's toxic trait? That she tells me what to do. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, kidding. my gosh. No, love I'm just it. Little therapy. I believe it. We, Taylor, I would love to know what your toxic trait is. Leaving the fan on? The lack of self-awareness <laughs> back there is astounding. That's the toxic trait. <laughs> the lack of self-aware- self-awareness. You're back there being you, the person that we've known for 20 years, and you can't think of one toxic trait being okay. you. Well, if Taylor's, it can't, Taylor doesn't have That's a toxic, his toxic trait. trait. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Wow. Uh, routines. Oh, what's your toxic trait? <laughs> She's like, I was going to pass that one. I parlayed it into routines, bitch. Um, my toxic trait is, I don't, is this a toxic trait? <laughs> She's like, um, oops. I don't like things that are overly sensory stimulated. You think that is your biggest toxic trait <laughs> of all the traits? Say that. It's not even toxic. Like my life is so organized. Yeah. My toxic perfect. trait is I'm either a complete slob mess, like the most like broccolini, like on the side <laughs> of the bed with 600 waters and magnesium and like a crusty spoon, or it, it's like Disney on ice clean. The like, Uber was pulling up today and I said, get in the shower. We're not going anywhere. So he get told me to get in the shower. You guys get in the shower. I said, we got a lot of, we got to be in a room today. I had to take a horse shower. I had to literally get a horse bath. I had to literally get in the shower 
and like use a towel because he was like, I'm not going anywhere. It is either so put together like the cover of this book or it is just it's like a tornado has come through and yeah, it's a disaster. Yeah, like the most chaotic fucking person you've ever seen. I mean, you have two kids though, so I feel like that's... No, no, no. This was before kids. <laughs> and you know what the most toxic thing is? Is you will destroy the house and make everything a mess and I will have one dish with one crumb on it and you'll be like, you're the messiest person. No, I'm... this is what it is and, th- and we can move on after this because this is No, boring. let's stay on this. But, yeah, I'm like, let's dig deeper. <laughs> this... <laughs> This is my thing. I like love making things so chaotic to like wrap it up in a bow again. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Mess like, it up to clean it. There's something about that 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 like I just love. Like things will be going extremely well in our relationship. No issues. No, Kids that, are that's okay. So boring. Business is great. <laughs> like add some color. I can't. I don't want everything. Like, I going looked on. at her yeah. last night. And I was like, she was all mad about something. I don't know what it was. And I go, you don't even know what you're mad about. You're just mad because yeah, you felt like I enough, wrote it in like my a, notes. Like a certain amount of time yes, had passed. Yes, I do know what it was. No, you don't. Yeah, so I do. And if you do, you don't Sometimes articulate Sometimes when it. he says things I don't like, I write it down <laughs> so I can then quote it later. This is a real hot No, but I yeah, looked at the calendar. Like, I'm like, when's the last time there was like a good fight and there hasn't been one in a while? So I'm like, oh, she just invented prepping. a reason. Yeah. yeah, she just invented something. Do you color code uh, fights in, into your calendar? I don't color code <laughs> fights into my calendar. I just write like a long ongoing notes app so I can be like, remember when you said, <laughs> yeah, and I'll pull the phone out and be like, da, 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 da. and sometimes I, I just want to get mad at something because I'm, told I'm you. bored. Told you. And so I'll go to the notes app and just like do. Wow. This has been very quick- therapeutic. Thesis. Brilliant. That's my toxic. We thing. love that. But I do like sensory overload is something. I don't think it's toxic, but. Listen, we're the, we're the wrong people to talk about it. We are women apologists. Like anything women do, we're like, like yes, Listen, that's valid. <laughs> what kind of line of work do you think I'm in here, right? <laughs> you know? What's it. your toxic trait before we move on? Um, I'm not the best listener. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's self-aware. And I host a podcast for a living, so it's not the greatest. It's not the greatest. Who are you again? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <gasps> routines. Lunch break? You know I have to routines. ask you about routines. What are your micro, little, tiny routines that you both do? You're obviously incredibly successful. You have a baby. Mm-hmm. And you must have like things that bookend your day. Yeah. My morning routine is uh, TBD at the moment. Okay. I'm trying to get it on, on lock. The night routine immaculate tell us we have to know every single okay well i've copied many details from probably your routine so things might might uh sound familiar but basically okay we start with where do i start i try and i've been going to bed very early lately like getting into bed 7 30 love it oh it's great um because i want to read the reality is i'm on tiktok for a little bit that's the truth i'm on tiktok for like 30 minutes and then i start reading on my kindle so before that, though, I do my full skincare routine and then I um, only have low lighting. If someone turns an overhead light on in my home. Atrocious. Atrocious. <laughs> like jail time. Get out. Get out I don't now. even want a light on in general. It's natural light, red light or move. Yeah. <laughs> past, <laughs> past 5 p.m. I'm done. Do not turn. Oh, it's so jarring. My husband will, like turn on the kitchen lights. My Oh, my gosh. My eyes. Michael never had dimmers until he met me. Really? But that's a different story. Go on. Yeah, I'm a big, like, very into lamps lately and just, like, low lighting. Um, So I have a red light lamp next to my bed, red light only at night when I get into bed. And I do, I read on my Kindle. I have a glass of water next to my bed. I have some, like, sleep gummies that I sometimes take. I've been feeling lately like they're maybe giving me bad dreams. Is that, like, something? What's in them? Melatonin. Melatonin. Oh, you know, melatonin's maybe not the best. Really? I've heard, I've heard mixed reviews though. Maybe glycine and GABA and some maybe theanine. I'll show you. I'll send okay. you the, the thing. <laughs> okay. Um, and then what else? I feel like I'm missing like a major step to my routine. I oh I have like this heat pack thing that um is homemade by my grandma, and I put it by my feet every night because it just like warms up the feet. Oh. And. That's kind of it. I feel like reading is the main the main thing that really is meditative for me because like I said, I'm a very go 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 type of person and I rarely just you know, rest my thoughts and and so I feel like reading is very meditative. What are you reading right now? Um, I'm reading a a romance novel and I forgot the name of it. It's something about December. Um, don't you find though when you read romance novels that you're like reading it and you're like this is so romantic and then I look over at Michael and I'm like I'm in my compression. I'm in my compression I'm pants. Like, just try like, harder. Hey. Pull out the notes app again. You know. Yeah. Yeah. They, like, it just kind of shines. I'm there like, taking care of my son, soothing him to sleep. And she's like this motherfucker. Caroline, Caroline Huber. 
Hoover. Oh, it's something like it's like a night in December. You're I couldn't have to post tell it on stories. I will. I could. I could not tell you the author. You know something else about me that's very bad is I retain no information. So I read because I love it mostly with like novels with uh fiction novels. I read those a lot before bed because I just feel like I can get lost in them and I really like it. Um, and then someone will ask me like a week later what the book was about and I'm like, I have no idea. That's I have to okay, go back though, and it's read. Meditative. I don't yeah. think that's bad. But I think that's meditative. In the moment, I know what's happening and I love the story. And then literally a week goes by and I don't remember any, anything about it. I mean, we have a lot of content being thrown at us. What it's can true. we say? It's true. It's true. Anyway, it's but yeah, that's the main. The vibes at night are just like relaxing. Don't bug me. Like, I can't. Like, no loud doors slamming. Yes. It's annoying. But only on my terms. So, like, if I want to talk about work, like, let's chat about work. Yeah. You know what I mean? Same well, with what the phone. It, doesn't this sound familiar? Same with the phone thing. Like, I'll be on my phone for an hour, and then Leif will get in bed next to me, and he'll be scrolling, and I'm like, it's, like, really bad habit. Like, <laughs> uh, you, you should see off. me. <laughs> Michael's staring at the phone one centimeter from his face. He goes, my eyes hurt. <laughs> like, I can not get out. The way he gets into bed, too, is like this. I'm like, oh, could you just like fluff a pillow? And, I like, never want you to forget I'm there, honey. <laughs> How could I forget that you're there? I never it's will. It's honestly disgusting. <laughs> Wait, what's your zodiac sign, Lauren? Gemini, can you tell? Okay. <laughs> Love that. Yeah. Wait, I was going to say, Aries? you're an Aries too. I that because I'm you... the same way. Like my, I'm so loud and it's been like a problem ever since I was little. Well, let me tell you why I'm loud, if I'm being honest. Because she has the fucking lights so low, <laughs> I can't see anything. I crash into everything because I can't see in the Invest dark. It's in pitch a red light black. flashlight. <laughs> She's like, what are you doing? Why are you so loud? I'm like, I can't see anything. I don't know where I am, right? That's why I'm crashing oh into gosh. everything. I know. If you, if you turn the light up just a little bit, I could see what's happening. Am I supposed to carry a fucking kerosene lantern into the room? <laughs> I would use a salt rock nightlife. Or oh, nightlife. Wait, that's my obsession too. Yeah. I have those all over my house. Yeah. It's yeah. like a nice, like the, the, the ambiance is yeah. just right. What is your routines? Yeah, rituals? you should have made me go first. Mine's way less nice. Okay. That's Mine's nice. just less. <laughs> it's because you're an Aries. Someone else, I, I was going to do a tweet the other day and it says, let me tell you the morning ideal, uh, the, the best morning routine, the ideal morning routine. And it literally just says, wake up. Yeah. Like that's, that is the routine for <laughs> that's me. That's not the routine. That is my routine. <laughs> I open my eyes and I just go. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, I will say Aries and Taurus are supposed to be the luckiest zodiac signs this Good. year. So I, I need, feel like every zodiac sign says that about themselves. This year. I know. And I'm just choosing to believe it this year, 2023. This, year. this is the year, Lauren. Okay. Yeah. So what is your routine? You have a baby, so it's a little different. It's really, yeah, I was going to say it really isn't. I would always complain to JC about like, especially when he was like six months old at the beginning, he would sleep in our room and I'd put him down at like 7 p.m. And I'm like, well, now I can't go into my bathroom and now I can't go into my room. So I'd have to like tiptoe in, put my pajamas on and then like hope my toothbrush is in the other bathroom and then just go to bed. So lately I've trying to I've been trying to have my own personal life still and my own routines while still having his. So I'll put him to bed and or my husband will and then I will scroll probably for a little bit but it's like it's different at night I feel like once you have a kid and you're just like able to just numb your mind for like an hour and just be like oh my gosh this is so nice to just literally think about the dumbest stuff like on my TikTok for you page but anyways and then I will I try to journal like and the thing that gets me to journal is I have one that's like one line a day and it's about like my son so it's like, I just have to write one line and it's just like what something that he did that day or something we did or something like that. And I don't do it every day, but I try and do it at least like once a week, um, which I've been really grateful I did the first year. You only write one sentence about your son a week. That's just, that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's, it. that's all I think about. He has a scrapbook for <laughs> yeah. his son. Yeah, well, maybe it's... you could write one sentence about <laughs> our kid, like maybe once every three years. Maybe. <laughs> It's hard to remember, like, when you think back, too. That's why I feel like it's good to do it every, like, as if you can remember once a day, even just one little line. Like, I'll be like, we went to the grocery store and he smiled at the, you know, uh, person register. checking me out. Yeah. Or something like that. But anyways, after I um, kind of have my own little alone time, I usually just literally put some moisturizer on, no, brush my teeth. About Chelsea. She has perfect skin. We were on tour and she's like do you have like a like a serum I could use? Like my skin's dry. And I go in and I'm holding it and I and I look at her and she's holding the same one. And I'm like, hold, I'm like, 
we have the same serum. Like, what, why don't you just use that? She's like, oh, I thought this was moisturizer. She's like, I've been wearing, using this as moisturizer for a year. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm like, and your skin looks like that? I'm like, okay, just keep doing what you're doing. You just guys do both have amazing skin. Oh, oh thank, thank you. you. It's, it's been a work in progress. No, you both, it's like a, it's like a dewy, like, I feel like uh, dolphin skin is really in right now. Ooh. Like wet. Semen yeah. skin. <laughs> Love that. Love it. Oh, you want some you of, know, TikTok you want some teaches skin, you. Lauren, I'm your guy. Yeah, now I'm going to be served semen skin on TikTok. Um, wake up. We are going on your podcast right now. Where can everyone find both of you? Where can they purchase your merch? Where can they listen to your podcast, your TikTok, everything? Everything for our podcast is what we said. It's what we said podcast on Instagram. You can look it up on Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. And you can shop our merch at shop.dearmedia.com, I think. <laughs> Slash what we said. Slash what we said. There's a shirt that you made that I stole off the rack, and it's like the number one. The phone number, number one. one. You oh, stole one 800 heinous. You stole some of their merch? <laughs> like, I asked like, Ariel if like, wow. I could that's... have it, and I said I would pay, and what she means... said, no, you just have it. Another toxic trait we found <laughs> is you're literally <laughs> robbing from the company, from the talent, from everything. <laughs> I'm cleaning yeah. <laughs> um, my personal Instagram and TikTok and YouTube, everything is just JC Marie Smith, my name. And mine's Chelsea Jade Curtis. And Chelsea is EY. Love it. You guys are a force. I'm excited to see what's in the future for you. You guys are very, very good at building community and a podcast. And thank you for coming on. Go listen thank to you us, for having you us on their podcast. Yes, we're going to get all the juice, yeah. you guys. Don't Two worry. Two killers. Thank tea. you guys for coming on the show. Thank you so much.